Welcome to the Arcade Couch, the best place to chill with your friends and get your gaming goodness every Saturday at 6 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. I'm John Blight. Joining me on the couch today, Ashley Hobley. Hi. That was okay. And, and Shree, you Sharona, Captain Cuties herself. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I, was, I made a mental note today. I was like, oh, I'll introduce you as, I'll just start introducing as Captain Cuties herself. But then as I started introducing you, I've remembered that I made that mental note. So it got tacked onto the end. But from <laughs> now on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and just say Captain Cuties herself is here. Well, yeah. we can just start again. I mean. Nah, fuck that. It's a one, one night only show. You know what they say? Right. It's live. All right. It's let's, live on the spot. Let's continue the train from last week. Let's get into some super depressing news. <laughs> yeah. Woo woo. <That's, laughs> well, I mean, most of the topics this week are lu- luckily a lot, uh, a lot lighter. We're not talking about uh, rape games or Steam being horrible or uh, THQ being fuckheads. So that's good. Not but it made yet. for an interesting. It made for an if, if interesting episode last last week. I'm just Ash constantly being like, "This is a fun show, Dylan." <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. You're yelling a lot. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was on his own. <laughs> Sucker. No one's here to help me. <laughs> I got stuck in a one night evening with Dylan on the couch next to me, just yelling a lot. Oh, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on today's show, though, we will be discussing uh, some of the inside Xbox news that's coming up for March. Apex Legends banning a bunch of people. Borderlands 3 potentially getting revealed at PAX Boston soon, uh, Division 2 impressions, and Wizards Unite finally getting some gameplay footage and uh, information revealed. But first, before all that, our gaming movie news, which seems to be nearly weekly at this point, which is also kind of interesting because at one stage there wasn't really that much game movie stuff happening, I suppose, but this year seems Pretty big, doesn't it? Like more so than the last year or the year before. Like there's a, there's a lot going yeah. on. I feel when it comes to. I can't think of any gaming related movie last year. Tomb Raider came out. No, was that year before? No, that was last year. That's that right. was last year. Okay, but that was only one movie at least. Like that we, was yeah, that was the yeah, only lot... one that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, and years before that, you would have had Assassin's Creed, and that was probably know. it. Or was that the year before that? I think that might. Well, it was like December, stage. so it's hard to say. Yeah, either way, it feels like there's a lot happening this year. And this week, we got the trailer for Doom Annihilation, which looks fucking terrible. The trailer is only 30 seconds long, but I'm pretty sure anyone that watches it gets a general idea of... I mean, I, I, I've mean, i seen everyone in the comments kind of calling it a TV movie, which is hard to argue with, even though that's something we talk about and what do you want to watch and what the fuck does a TV movie even really mean these days? It should be nominated for an Emmy, Ash, hey? Yeah, fucking go listen to yep. what you want to watch this week. Uh, so what, what did we all think of the trailer for Doom Annihilation? Uh, I think we are getting punished just, <laughs> just so that we can get Detective Pikachu. This is our penance <laughs> that we have to pay in order to receive the delight that will be Detective Pikachu. I don't know if this it is, looks I think this is it, just, it, it looks like a bland movie that has Doom tacked onto it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Sheree? Yeah. 30 seconds was definitely long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad when it was over. <laughs> Maybe the full movie is only two minutes, so. <laughs> We'd want to hope get. so. I think that when you walk into the cinema, if you dare go and pay to see this movie, that you'll walk out and you'll be like, so that was the thing. I'm, I'm I think they would be they would definitely say that because it is, as Dylan said, a video. So if you paid to go <laughs> say that in a cinema, you've been duped. <laughs> you, I'm surprised. You're doomed, as some might say. <laughs> <laughs> that too. When it, when the trial starts, you get that quick like 0.5 of a second of the Universal logo. Um, and it's like they quickly get rid of it as fast as they can because even U- Universal's like we have to have our logo here, but at the same time, we just don't want people to know we're associated with it, with it at all. So it just kind of comes up and disappears very fast before the trailer begins. It The funniest thing about it is the trailer is so bad that it makes the 2005 Doom movie look good, which is a pretty hard, you'd, you'd think would have been a hard thing to do, but this trailer somehow managed to pull it all, pull it all together. 
At least that movie had the first person shooter sequence thing, which was kind of cool. I, I will say though, the person who's directing this is someone who's done a bunch of, uh, crap, right? On SWAT, Under Siege, Extraction. What's his name? He, he, uh, doesn't matter at this point. Does it, does it matter is the question? Tony G- Gigolo. Gigolo. Tony Gigolo. We're going with that. We're going with that. Uh, he, he did, he wrote <laughs> all the asked. Death Race. <laughs> he wrote all the Death Race sequels, which was kind of positive to me. If only because I thought actually the Death Race 2 was better than the first one and it was straight to DVD, but he didn't direct it. So that doesn't really help at all. Uh, the synopsis for Doom Annihilation, though, in case you're wondering what the movie is actually about, I mean, it's pretty much typical Doom plot, follows a group of space marines as they respond to a distress call from a base on a Martian moon, only to discover it's been overrun by demonic creatures who threaten to create hell on Earth. Uh, I think the, the only thing to really be said about this is if you want a good Doom movie or some something like that just go watch some doom gameplay there go you. watch a let's play of the last doom yeah i think the problem is that there's nothing that actually stands out in this trailer compared to several other movies that you could have watched so i just don't i don't see the incentive for people specifically gamers that are going to want to actually go and see it. Well, I don't think anybody's going to see it, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of think that's the thing. Unless it comes to like a streaming uh, service and people like mm, feel bad for no, it. I'll check it out. <laughs> no. I'd rather just watch the one with the rock in it because at least it has the rock in it. You know, it's better than nothing. But at least this, this movie has literally no one in it. Uh, moving on though. That's probably the last time we'll ever bring up that movie. Uh, unless something really bad or funny happens. Uh, Apex Legends has banned 355,000 players since Lords, which I found, obviously, that's a high, a ridiculously high number. And although you, it's one of these things you're like, you know people cheat, but to, to know that this many people have been banned and then you're like, well, how many people haven't been banned? And then it's also one of these things where I'm like, I kind of give uh, them props for banning that many people that fast. Like they're really kind mm-hmm. of on top of it, which I like. So the story comes from the insider.com and it says, Apex Legends, a popular new battle royale shooter from Electronic Arts and Respawn Entertainment has banned more than 355,000 players for cheating since the game was released on February 4th, 2019, according to a community update posted on Reddit. Respawn said it is working with an internal specialist from EA and third-party experts to develop new methods for dealing with cheaters moving forward. Apex Legends will be introducing a report, a report feature for players to flag suspicious activity and Respawn will invest in more staff members for its anti-cheat team quote we are working on improvements to combat cheaters and we're going to have we're going to have to be pretty secretive about our plans cheaters are crafty and we don't want the, them to see us coming respawn community manager jay fresh fresh or something fret wrote on reddit uh because apex legends is a free game many of those banned could be repeat offenders which is you know they make a new account they make a new account but holy shit imagine if it's like just five people that have managed to make that yeah many <laughs> Uh, Respawn said it's also looking for ways to punish players who repeatedly join three player squads in Apex, spam messages in the in-game chat, then leave at the start of the match. I've never seen this happen. Because Apex doesn't allow players to join in mid-match, these spammers leave regular players without a team at for the entire round. Uh, Blah, 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 continues on. So as the Explosion Network resident Apex Legends pro uh, and esports player, Ash, what do you think about uh, this news? Uh, It's good. I mean, nobody likes cheats. Uh, Obviously, it's interesting that's a high number. Uh, It just goes to show that PC players are the worst because they're, (laughs) yeah. I mean, what? where's, I don't know what the incentive is to play like cheat in a game like this. I mean, other than uh, saying that you won a lot and getting different perks, I guess leveling up faster. Uh, yeah. uh, Your stats say you won a lot, I guess. Yeah, I guess. You- I mean, but when, do you get any sort of rush or joy or vindication or anything out of it? I don't think so. I don't know. You get in-game currency more often, I suppose, to I spend guess. on unlocks. So, I, I mean, don't you know. You don't I, really I get people- level up that much further from winning. No. You get an extra 500 points. Just- 
Yeah, I presume the cheating thing is just people who, it is like, oh, look at all the wins I've got, but they don't, they're just happy to cheat to have all the wins. But yeah. Oh, how, what do you think about the, because I've only, it, it happens to me every so often and it is annoying uh, where, but I don't th- I've never seen people do it on purpose because obviously the in-game chat, people would write more in the in-game chat on PC, but on PlayStation and Xbox, like people can't just quickly bring up an in-game chat thing to to write in there at you they can talk to you but if people are leaving they're not really talking to you but there's only been a couple times where i've started a match it happened to me the other day i started a match and i was left alone both of my uh, my teammates dropped right before i had even landed so as soon as i jumped out of the the craft right at the start of the, the match and i'm floating down i'm like what the fuck are my teammates and i look in the bottom left hand cre- left hand side of the screen where it shows you your, your teammates and it, there's only my icon there i'm like okay um and then i suddenly just went to the most populated area i could because i'm like i'm just by myself so fucking let's uh just land in the worst place possible and see how b- bad i can go but yeah how often have you seen people mm. actually just jump out before the match even starts and you're left without teammates rarely i mean occasionally yeah. it's just for one has just dropped out mm-hmm. for whatever reason or it just starts up the game like occasionally it'll start up around with only two people i don't know what that's just mm-hmm. the matchmaking thing just wanting to get people into games as quickly as possible and just like, uh, close enough. It, sh- but, it shouldn't be. But. Yeah, but I mean, I haven't had too many issues with dropouts. I mean, if it happens, it's just bad luck, really. Not much you yeah. can do about it. Not much they can do I about it, it. Yeah, it's an, it's annoying for this game. The, the one thing I want them to add or figure out a way to implement into it to make it a bit better is a reconnect system. So, like... Other games I know have, like League of Legends, for example, has a reconnect system where, uh, so if you, if you get kicked out, you can rejoin the match within a minute or two minutes or something like that. Yeah. So say if the, your client crashes or something like that, or you have an internet connection issue, you're able to rejoin the match. And the main reason that has it is because if you do leave, then your team could report you for leaving. That game has a report system where you can report people for leaving. So it's then it's like, if Apex implements a system where you could report people for rage quitting on your team or something, if you're able to report them for that, but people aren't able to rejoin, then you could be wrongfully reporting people who have like internet issues or, you know, these sorts of things. So yeah. it's like you need to balance it out, I guess. But I, I think it's really good how on the top they are for the numbers, really. 355, it, later in the article it says, Nobody, though nobody wants to play with cheaters with 355,000 accounts banned from Apex Legends represents less than 1% of the 50 million registered players who have tried the game. It's so low when you look at that huge number and it's like, oh, that's only 1%. Uh, Respawn is working to eliminate cheaters entirely and Apex Legends will continue to roll out improvements in the coming months. I think one of the things that really being so on top of banning people, uh, what it says to me is just how much they really want this to be an esports title because mm. they have to be on top of making it yeah like keeping on top of the rules and making it lawful and having systems that work to be able to make it a competitive game that works so that's all really that's what it screams to me they really want this to be the first battle royale obviously they've done Fortnite events but no one really counts those Fortnite <laughs> events worth fucking shit because Fortnite should not be an esports game uh whereas this one obviously has the potential so I, i'm happy to see it i'm, gl- I'm glad they're doing it because Fuck cheese. I watched a video on Twitter the other day, actually, where someone was cheating in the game and I had no idea how it was working. I understood nothing what was happening, but it must have been some cheat or hack or something that involved looking at the ground because it was all it was was the player constantly looking at the ground as I was moving and then they managed to like fire through the ground and hit people and stuff. And I was like, I don't understand how this is happening. But as Ash just said, that proves why PC players are the worst. Hashtag Apex Legends Ashley Hobley Pro. How many wins you got, by the way, Ash? It's been a while. How many? How many mm, up to? Maybe five, something like that. Oh my fucking god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them I was actually there for. No, yeah, <laughs> most of them, yeah. I still haven't got a single fucking win. Really? <laughs> no, I haven't got one. I make top three like pretty consistently. Yeah. But then, but all my teammates will die on me, and I'm not good enough to uh, take them out. Like, no take everyone else out by myself i'm not quite that good no. but then it's like so i don't really get angry but at the same time i'm like oh, 
YGs both have to die because I can't do yeah. this by myself. Yeah, and none I'm of you are good enough to carry fodder, me. So. Hey? I'm usually the cannon, cannon fodder, fodder, yeah. Oh, it's like this fucking match I was playing the other day where I'm, just, I'm behind cover, I'm inside this building, I'm just popping away at these, these dudes off in the distance and we're, like there's only they're the only other team left and then my teammates are like, oh, this is too boring. I better go run up and try to get right in their face and then they die and I'm like, I just I fucking hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going. Uh, this today, or well, as of recording, inside Xbox had its monthly showing. Uh, these things are basically like Nintendo Directs at this point on a monthly, pretty much b- monthly basis where they announce little things here and there. Uh, it's like usually an hour long show in case you're not keeping up with what inside Xbox is. Uh, in it, the biggest thing they announced was that the Halo Master Chief Collection will be coming to PC soon. It's going to be coming to both Windows the Windows Store. Is that what they call it? The window, yeah. The Windows Store along with uh, Steam as well. Woo! And then they're going to announce... Let me fucking get, let me get to that <laughs> shit in a second. Yeah, I'll st- you thought Steam wasn't going to be mentioned this week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Not in a bad uh, context. So, <laughs> the, they're going to announce more details at the Halo Championships, which are taking place at South by Southwest this weekend. I was trying to work out like when the dates took place from America to Australia. And I'm pretty sure it's happening the day this episode drops, like on the weekend, Saturday, so, or, or roughly around that time. The Halo Collection will also be getting Halo Reach added to it in 4K, 60 frames per second. But- I tried to look this up because it's like... I own the Halo collection. I've never played it. As we've been over this, mul- we've been over this multiple times at, the, at this point. Whoa, so we why? don't need to go over that again. But why are you angry, what a surprise. <laughs> I own it, so I'm like, I own a disc. Does that mean I get Halo Reach added to my ongoing list of Halo games? I'll not play. Just keep adding up into the corner and never getting around to uh, to playing. Uh, so yeah, Halo coming to PC. I think the the biggest thing that I've seen, like obviously, there's internet cre- uh, reaction as like Nick, for example posted now Slack straight away. He's like, oh, I'm so fucking excited for this because mm. he doesn't own it because he doesn't own an Xbox and he's uh, wants to play the Halo games. And I'm sure there's a lot of people like him, but uh, it's like they're the people that never own Xboxes so are going to be excited to get a chance to play it. I suppose these uh, terrible the PC thing, people. I'll, yeah, the other thing I've seen people get jokingly pointing out and jokingly getting excited about, but at the same time, I know is going to be a thing. Is all these people are like, oh, Xbox is making it, is coming to PC. Uh, 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 Xbox is coming to PC. Halo is coming to PC. Halo used to be obviously a really big esports game. So now everyone's kind of going, oh shit, that means Halo is coming to PC. It's all of a sudden beca- going to become a thing, which a lot of people are joking about. But at the same time, I'm like, it probably is. If, it, if Halo it's comes to PC, one of the, it'll probably end up becoming a go to some sort of FPS tournament thing happening in the future. Uh, yeah. Ashley going to try and boot up. Halo uh, on your, no. your laptop? No, I don't reckon I can handle it. No, I reckon I'm if you good. delete some toolbars and ask Jeeves things I mean, that you've got up there on you. I mean, do, they should have to change the name thing as there's going to be a game without Master Chief in it. That's true. Now it's just Unless the, they're adding Master Chief to Halo Reach. Heard it here first. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> we do break news here. It's a known fact at this point. We do break news. Yep. Well, we. I don't even know... We yes. all know that this isn't actually going to like change the facts of whether you're going to play it or not, Dylan. Well, yeah, I mean, it coming to PC makes little to fucking <laughs> no difference. I keep saying I'll play Halo eventually, but I mean, look, maybe one day. It, it, there's a chance of it possibly happening. The, the game exists. I have the means to play it. I have no excuse apart from all the ones I give you. Look, I'm just a busy person, right? I ain't got time to play as some green Martian person talking to Contara or whatever her name is. Cortana. <laughs> Not <laughs> Contana. <laughs> whatever, okay? Halo expert. I, I think this is good news, though, obviously. Coming to PC, uh, it, it was probably the standout from the inside Xbox thing. Xbox just continues to be like, hey, let's just fucking put our shit everywhere. Like when they announced that they're going to put Game Pass on Nintendo Switch very soon. Oh, my God. <laughs> They are going to bring, uh, they will bring like the smaller indie titles to Switch. But yeah, Game no, Pass you're have is full not Game coming Pass. to Switch. Yeah, because then you can play the Halo Master Chief Collection on it. No, it's not. I'm not Switch. going into this. On the go. I'm going to qu- pull the plug before it gets started. You can't pull the plug. You're recording it. 
Xbox also announced in the thing a bunch of other things, but one of the things related to Halo was they talked a little bit about E3 and how they're going. To, they're really excited and they're planning out all their EC, E3 plans, and they will be indeed showing Halo Infinite there, which is exciting for Halo fans and people who have actually <laughs> played the games. But uh, it's also good to know that they're actually going to show the game because, of course, last year it was just like here's a bunch of pretty landscapes and stuff. And then was, I remember like when I was doing the recording, the reacts and, and stuff to it, I was like, was all just like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, oh, it's Halo. Oh, it's a Halo Battle Royale. Surely that's what we're doing. But then they never showed, <laughs> yeah. they never showed anything more about it, of course. So um, At least some game still... is being shown at EA, uh, E3. Yeah. Yeah. Well, game's going to be shown there. Just not It'll PlayStation. The well, I mean, game PlayStation shown. games could be there, but. Everybody else is pulling out. No, uh, E3, E3, uh, EA is still showing games there technically, maybe. So much negativity on this show this week, I tell you what. Not compared to last week, let's be real. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, here's my last note on the Halo Master Chief production. Uh, it's coming to PC. As I mentioned before, it's available on the Windows Store and the Steam Store. Uh, if you're going to buy it on PC, please buy it from the Windows Store and not Steam because Steam are fuckheads and do not support them if you have a choice. If it was only on Steam, I would be understand, of course. Okay. Oh, but, but that, I have to buy here, install another client. You don't. PC they, I'm pretty sure if you own a Windows 10 PC, they just fucking force you to have the Windows no, Store no, the attached client, to your PC. I need to install. It's too difficult. I need to insert my credit card details in a new <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's your internet troll voice. You're like, oh. I especially like this voice. Hey, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you should be using that voice all the time. It's an PC outrage. <laughs> I cheated Apex Legends. <laughs> <laughs> what a spoof. <laughs> it's, it's Jesus what? Christ. <laughs> um, okay, so the other thing they showed off that was kind of important is but they showed off their Project X Cloud thing, which they showed Forza Horizon 4 being played on a mobile device. Wow. Uh, One week after PlayStation 4 remote play on mobile phones, mm. they bring this out. These be just fighting words. Still trying to catch up. Constantly. Closely. So <laughs> on the blog post they wrote, on today's episode of Inside Xbox, we gave viewers the first real look at Project X Cloud, a vision for games, for the game streaming technology that will complement our console hardware. I like how they make it very they're like, look, look, we're not trying to go full mobile. Uh complement our console hardware and give gamers more choice in how and where they play. We're developing Project X Cloud as a not as a replacement for video game console, but as a way to provide the same choice and versatility that lovers of music and movies enjoy today. We're adding more ways to play Xbox games. We're excited to share more about the technology in the coming months, including the first details of how and where you can help us test it in real world scenarios later this year. Uh, of course, Project X Cloud basically means fuck all to anyone in Australia because no one's internet is pretty much going to be able to handle this in most places. Exactly. Uh, especially the people I'm recording with right now who are struggling to uh, see me. Look, am I a blur? Can your internet handle it in Brisbane? Oh, is it too hot? Did your broadband wires burn out? Oh, okay, everyone, it's okay. Um, me, though. Oh, can you, you know, see this finger? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I did. I did. I did. Oh, good. Then it's working. <laughs> he stuck the naughty <laughs> finger at me, everyone. <laughs> Internet is obviously fine. <laughs> um, but I think I think it's a cool technology, and uh, I found the one interesting point about the the line about um, movies and music, about giving the same versatility that lovers of music uh, music and movies enjoy today. Because I got like got thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, people do choose to watch fucking interstellar and all these these massive movies that were designed to be shown on imax screens on their fucking mobile phones and like iPads heathens and, yeah like heathens exactly but the fact is that the choice is there so i think a lot of the a lot of things that people will say about why would you want to play forza or, or halo or whatever it is uh on your mobile phone screen a lot of people are gonna be like oh you're supposed to play it on a big tv and stuff but yeah i guess they do bring up a sort of good point that like people do choose to watch movies just in the because you place. can doesn't mean you should yeah but <laughs> you're right and i agree but the choice does exist in other mediums it just doesn't exist in games at the moment i suppose so just but even the we're just field. saving them from their own stupidity uh moving on <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness this is a great episode <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but this, this, this seems to be pushing towards the rumors that the next Xbox will have like a streaming sort of thing in it. If this is something they're working towards, uh, not having like a disk drive and then just being purely a streaming box. Mm-hmm. I'd imagine. Well, they announced that they announced the Xbox streaming thing, whatever that's called. I can't even remember at this stage, but th- that wasn't a big deal. It's like, hey, the Xbox is coming out. It's not going to have a disk drive. How much is it going to cost? I'm not un- entirely sure, but then it's like if they if they're testing that on the Xbox now, then surely that's just testing the grounds for the next Xbox to just release day one with one that has a disk drive and one that doesn't. I guess. Yep. Because I doubt they'd get rid of the disk di- drive completely. Like having two consoles, one with and one out, maybe as an option, is a good idea. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Build some sort of technology in in it that helps you boost the signal i guess to make streaming easier i don't know if that's a thing they can make a slimmer version too by doing that yeah they get rid of a lot of the the stuff that needs the the disc shit so um me personally as we kind of on platinum explosion this week when we was talking about the uh, remote play on your phone and stuff i apart from rpgs and stuff i don't really want to play these games on my phone because the screen's like way too small i could see maybe a bigger size ipad working for this sort of stuff it's nice that because they are designing this to actually like you can just hook up your xbox controller via bluetooth at least like that is something that's easy to do there's no they're not like you play with a fucking on-screen touchboard or uh, touchscreen controls and do these sorts of things so but if the technology is good and it works well in certain places of the world i guess that it'll be interesting i mean if the technology is really good they could actually make it work in australia because Often I think about like when Netflix launched in Australia and then like Stan was a little bit after that. I remember Netflix, I was used to love Netflix because if you was on someone's in- internet connection at the house or something and they had like not as good internet, Netflix is really good about if your internet drops, it will just drop the quality but keep playing what you're watching. Like it adjusts, as, adjusts constantly to what the internet is and will just keep playing. Whereas I remember when Stan launched, it was like if your internet ever had problems, it would just pause. Like it wouldn't adjust the quality up and down to make sure your experience kept going without causing you issues. It would be like, oh, you've got problems. We can't stream at 720, 1080p, whatever. Uh, we'll just freeze. Gone. So I, I think there's things you can do to... Uh, for this game technology at the same to like pre-stream packets of data to your to to you ahead of time that could help out and whatever else we'll have to see i i don't think it's as simple as like streaming the data one for one obviously like i think that would be a, a silly way to go about the technology you'd have to be streaming kind of prepared for internet dropouts and like yeah. little second dropouts and stuff for to fix all the lag issues and stuff um all right, Borderlands 3 seems to finally have its announcement on the horizon. Uh, pr- probably going to get announced at PAX Boston. I don't know. Is that the one they call East or West? I don't East. know. PAX East. Here we go. East. Uh, so this article comes from jewelshockers.com. Gearbox seems ready to finally unveil Borderlands 3 at the end of this month during PAX East. After Gearbox Software confirmed last month last month that it would be attending PAX East 2019 in Boston with never-before-seen reveals, Uh, slated to take place many assume that this might finally be the time when the developer would reveal the long-awaited borderlands 3 well in a new twist in a new tweet shared from gearbox this afternoon that seems to be exactly what's going on the tweet in question that gearbox shared today contained an image of a highway sign standing in what seems to be in the middle of a desert the sign seems to have been spray painted with the date of march 28th which is the date in which Gearbox will be holding its panel at the convention. What all that confirms, though, that Borderlands 3 will indeed be the topic of conversation is the Exit 3 indicator that is seen in the top right-hand corner of the sign. Even though the number 3 is a bit chopped off, you can still easily make out what it is. Clearly, this is meant to be teasing Borderlands 3. Otherwise, why throw that number in there? Gearbox doesn't seem to be beating around the bush any longer and there's really no reason to. Everyone's known for quite some time that Borderlands 3 has been in development and it seems come the end of the month we'll finally get our first look at the highly anticipated sequel. Uh, so I think it makes sense. It's about time. It makes sense. The, it's also worth pointing out that the picture, like the tonally, like what's happening in the background and like the art style, I guess, and that sort of thing would make sense for your Borderlands type. Uh, of game uh if you want to get excited about borderlands 3 you should check out 
the article that Jaden wrote for us last year over on explosionnetwork.com. <laughs> Linked in the show notes, of course. Uh, our f- one and only ever guest written article by Jane Pryor titled Borderlands 3, what a fan wants from the highly anticipated series, where he goes over the facts and things that he wants uh, to be put out. I think that was around the time when we thought the game was going to be coming out uh, for E3, and then that never happened, of course. And that's probably because we predicted it. I think yeah. one of us predicted it was going to get announced, and we cursed it. So That sounds like something we do. Yeah. <laughs> so well not something ask? I'd do thanks yeah. uh, I'm <laughs> really excited for Borderlands? them to announce uh, Duke, the new Duke, Duke, Duke Nukem game imagine that people would <laughs> fucking lose yep. their minds I people mean that get or so Battleborn 2 uh, it'd be great Battleborn 2 people would riot people would riot in the fucking streets <laughs> packs would never be the same blood would be spilled I feel at that point yeah <laughs> No, uh, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be Borderlands. Uh, yeah, and I'm excited for fans of Borderlands. I just wish that we would get another Tales of the Borderlands, but that seems very, very unlikely. Mm. Uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Telltale Games has shut down. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Well, they were the ones that did it. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm. I'm. I find it interesting that it's not really that far away, and they've teased it. Like, well, you know, they could have gotten hype even if they teased it like two weeks ago or longer than that. And then people would have had to wait even longer. Nah, people would have been pissed off. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I think they don't want to wait too long. People are pissed off anyway. Gamers have hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gamers have hate. That is a great the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Gamers have hate. Hate. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I'm not arguing. It's just <laughs> They'll a, be it's unhappy a, it's regardless. So <laughs> it's a good quote. Yeah. Um, no, I, th- I think. Well, it's about like a week and a half, two weeks, whatever it is. Uh, from when you're listening to this, I guess I don't really know. Um, not that far away, but it's far enough that people can write articles about it and be like, "Oh, this theorize, blah 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 blah." So it's, it's enough time for a, a bunch of yeah. stuff and hype to be built from outlets. Uh. But not so far out that the new cycle kind of forgets about it going into packs, I guess. Do you, do you well, expect- I mean, like, the teaser wasn't that, it, you know, it's not that big. It just kind of tells you it's coming, guys. It's coming. Yeah, no, but we've pretty much, it's all but confirmed at this stage. That's why I don't think they need much lead because we already know they're working on it. Like, people, it's, it's a known fact that the game's been worked on for quite some time. So it's not like one of those, oh, shit, I didn't even know they was working on it. It's more of one of those... Okay, they finally decided to actually reveal it in some form. But we we know it's a thing. Do you expect it to be radically different to 1 and 2, or do you think it's going to be pretty similar? I would expect it to be completely different and piss off pretty much all of the fan base. Cool. Yeah, that's what <laughs> they expect, yeah. What, you think I'm wrong? No, yeah. <laughs> I guarantee it'll be... Well, I can't guarantee, of course, but if I was... <laughs> <laughs> betting my money on something, I would be putting it on. It's going to be a shared world type game thing, not just a co-op experience. So more Destiny. So it's like. yeah, yeah. Well, of course it will be. That's the hot. That's the hotness right now. Of course, the shared world games and and stuff like that. Yeah. Something that something that they can put out and they can update and whatever else. But something at the same time they can add loot boxes into and costume design you know all these sorts of things like that's just going to scream that's the the design loop of that is going to scream a lot better i feel and shared Uh worlds these days these destiny things division anthem whatever these are things that all people these are the the game genre that's probably the, the hottest at the moment and then although your battle royale games aren't exactly the same like your Fortnite, your apex not in the exact same genre but they're still like um live service games, you know, yep. like they're continuously moving and updating and they have micro transactions that uh, is a big plus for publishers and uh, board members and whatever else, you know, for means of making money. So, yeah, I I would be highly surprised if this comes out and it's just more Borderlands where you can team up with two to four friends and run around in a world together. This is going to be Borderlands 3 where you will have your own little town and there'll be certain people in there and then you can invite people out and you go into the world together and yeah, that's exactly what I think it'll be. Yeah. 
that could work. I mean, you'd have your own customizable characters, I assume, with their own four or five different classes or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, that could be interesting. But again, that would probably piss off a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not. So- I'm not saying it couldn't work. I just expect it to piss off the fan base completely. So, or in, part in fact, of the fan base. Yeah, well, yeah, I just expect it to piss off a lot of the fan base. There's so many questions, though, when you bring in, like, a game like that, it's, and then the potential of PvP and stuff in a game when Borderlands was literally pitched as this, like, you know, the random guns, and we've got, like, a million different kinds of guns. It's like, how do y'all, how do you work that into a live server shared universe type world thing, you know what I mean? If there's, do you get rid of that? And then if they get rid of that element of Borderlands, it's, it's, suddenly not really i don't know suddenly it doesn't feel like borderlands i guess if there's the loot element of it is so much different uh yeah. to what makes borderlands loot it's more in tone with in in line with the loot system in uh your division your destiny whatever else here's your purple gun here's your gold gun here's all these <laughs> rarities and, and stuff not opening up a gun like you did in a borderlands pre-sequel that yelled australian obscenities at people that's what we need i haven't played that game by the way but that's still the best one the best fucking random things I ever saw pop up on the internet. Uh, in fact, I thought it was... Uh, actually, I think it was when Good Game was reviewing it and they included that scene. This probably was like one of the last scenes of Good Game. There's a, if, in case you don't know, Borderlands pre-sequel has a gun that you can get and it just yells out stuff like, ah, fuck you, you dirty fucking mole! And, and random shit like this because that Borderlands the pre-sequel was made by an Australian uh, developer and it, like there's so much... Austra- or partly Australian developer, I guess. And... It's like all the characters are all basically Australian because it's apparently the Australians all fucked off to the moon or something. I don't really know, but it sounds like something <laughs> we do. Yeah, if if you do, if you've never seen this Borderlands gun clip, I suggest looking it up because it is quite amusing just to see a, a, a random Australian obscenities, stereotypical shit being coming out of a gun as you're shooting people. Put that in Borderlands Three. That's cool. what we need more. So of. pretty much, we're saying, <laughs> Jaden, prepare for disappointment because the third key point pretty in much. his article is. Don't be your destiny. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, Jaden, but I think it's going to be a destiny. I, for your sake, I hope I'm wrong, but that's that's where I'm putting my my money. Yeah, I I think there's a feel this. It could go either way. Yeah, I, I think so too. I'm going to go on the opposite side of the spectrum and say it won't be. Yeah. Okay, I see how it is. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh. This week we finally got Wizards Unite information and gameplay. Uh, this is the next game in the Go-like formula from developer Niantic Games. So because I was trying to figure out how to type all this information into a way that would make sense, we're not going to do that. We're just going to read a fair bit of this Kotaku article over here by one Cecilia D. I can't pronounce her last name, but I'll call her Cecilia D. One of the best writers we Deanna have going Stacey. at the moment. Thank you. One of the best writers we have going at the moment. Uh, Pokemon Go developer 90 and Warner, Warner Brothers Games just gave us our first in-depth look at the gameplay for the next augmented reality game, Harry Potter Wizard Unite, slated for release sometime this year. From the screenshots and videos 90 dropped today, it's immediately apparent that Harry Potter Wizard Unite beta looks a lot better than its Niantic predecessor. predecessor. The character models, graphics seem well detailed and the spells look pretty damn good so far. Uh... Harry Potter Wizard Unite's gameplay doesn't split players into teams as of now. Eurogamer reports, but they choose one of three classes, the Maziologist, the Professor, and the Aura, which respectively are good at taking their magical beasts, understanding the intricacies of magic and spellcasting. Everybody is a member of a group of top wizards called the Statue of Secrecy Task Force, which aims to neutralize evil doing artifacts from around the world here's niantic's description of the game's plot from the website so this is one thing i've read several times and i've heard people talk about it in videos and stuff and every time i'm like this plot that they're trying to set up in this game is f- fucking nonsense yep. <laughs> but, yep. and it says I call, and this apparently in some f- form of fashion because the wizarding world is now like a canon overarching thing this is apparently maybe canon i don't know it's weird 
A calamity has befallen the wizarding world, causing artifacts, creatures, people, and even memories to mysteriously appear in the muggle world. Witches and wizards from across the globe must come together to solve the mystery of the calamity, overcome the confounding chaotic magic that surrounds these foundables and return them to their rightful place, keeping them safe from muggle eyes. Your journey begins as a new recruit of the Statue of Secrecy Task Force established by the Ministry of Magic and the International Confederation of Wizards for the purpose of investigating and containing the calamity. The article then continues, those foundables will function basically like Pokemon and Pokemon Go. Players must hunt them down in the or games or mag- augmented reality, but then instead of catching them, players will destroy or neutralize them with spells. Spells used by the players will cost spell energy, which players can replenish at inns found around muggle locations around the world, basically like, like spinning stops to get Pokeballs. The site continues while exploring. You'll also come across ingredients that can be used to brew potions, which will aid you in different aspects of your wizarding world journey. These ingredients can be found on the map, varying by the environment, weather, and time of the day, as well as in specially designed greenhouses. Players can visit fortresses where the game's hosts real-time multiplayer challenges like fighting Dementors, Right now, Eurogame reports these raid locations can accommodate five players. Most exciting to me are the game's port man- manticus locations that unlock port keys and item from Harry Potter that here will transfer transfer players to locations in the Wizarding World in 360 degree augmented reality. Uh, pre-registration is open now for Google Play, but not for yet for iOS. Rip. Uh, so what... Uh, our thoughts and opinions on all of that because honestly it's quite a lot to take in i think there's mm. a lot more going on here and it's uh, uh somewhat similar but also at the same time a lot different to pokemon go mm. i guess i um, think yeah, it's, sure. <laughs> I, I think if you have if you haven't pl- like played um pokemon go or ingress which is the other niantic Di- game that works on pokestops and current Pokestops and well, and technically, I'm Pokestops sure work on gyms. ingress locations, but pardon. Well, technically, it's all the way around. Well, yeah, Pokestops ingress was, work on ingress um, was first. portals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think if you haven't played that, but you're going to delve into this um, wizarding world for the first time, all of that probably sounds really confusing. Um, I can see how it's going to work. My biggest thing is this sounds like a lot more um, in depth and have a lot more other elements than the other two games. So my issue is like, you know, Niantic already have like server issues and bug problems with their updates and all of that. Um, Like even Pokemon Go at the moment is just constantly crashing and they've got all these update problems and – I'm just wondering, like, how are they how are they creating something that's going to have all of these n- different elements and even more than their current games and upkeep that to not have constant problems? Because when I hear like all of that, I'm just like, hmm, yeah, that's all well and good, but how is that going to translate to being consistently? good gameplay especially when it first comes out to not having a million problems uh i don't know i mean they're a lot better than <laughs> years ago but yeah uh, it's next it's an extra plate for them to be to be spinning i don't know if they're, they're gonna i don't know if around the time they're getting ready to launch the game if they're gonna like bring on more people and these sorts mm. of things i don't know that's a possibible they could be hiring people to yeah to have more on board, i mean more i think up. I think it's cool. Like I think um, the way that they're basically converting what would be normal raids in Pokemon Go into um, battling Death Eaters and stuff like that. I think like that's, you know, that's pretty cool. It's the same sort of concept, but, you know, obviously you're a wizard. It's it's fucking awesome. So, I mean, I love Harry Potter, but I'm just, I'm definitely like skeptical on how it's all going to, how it's all going to work. My... Yeah, it's like, I like Harry Potter too. <laughs> do you? <laughs> do we? I do. Oh, yes, I do like Harry Potter. My, my biggest problem with this game compared to Pokemon is like what people may take as a complaint about Pokemon is kind of a plus to me, which is that it's very easy to play while I'm fucking walking around town and looking in shops and doing other things. Because like, you click on Pokemon, you spin a ball, you throw it at it. It's, it's, I can't remember the exact word, but 
it, it's very easy to multitask while you're doing. It doesn't require too much attention mm. unless you're doing a raid or some, something like that, I suppose. Ash gave me a funny face because he's like, oh, you got to... But you actually have to tap the screen, Ash. It's a little bit more attention required than doing other stuff. Uh, for this game, though, everything is going to... Everything because you're, like, battling all these things and casting spells and stuff. And the gameplay I watched, they had, like... From what I could see, it's like, hey, you have to you have to follow this line that was drawn on the screen, like a certain shape to like perform the spell cast and stuff. So it's a lot more attention seems to be required. And then mm. for everything you're doing, it's also a lot more happening on the screen. And like, well, it does sound like the battery was. Is it solely? Is it seems a lot more designed around AR play than Pokemon is? Yeah, so much happening. And as much as like the the port keys thing, uh, the seems cool. You know, like walk in look around in the in these special portal things and stuff like that that seems cool and all but i'm like day-to-day gameplay it just seems like it might be a lot and then the other pr- thing i have of course with this is i'll try it out but i really wonder for a lot of people who play pokemon go on like a daily basis there's only so much time in the day and being the idea of having to play this Plus Pokemon. Of course, that was forcing me to, but the idea of having to play this and Pokemon <laughs> basically seems like taking on a full-time fucking job, potentially. Like yeah, a lot I mean, of work, it seems. I, I've seen like from people that play Pokemon Go and Ingress are just like, it's full on, especially Ingress has quite a big grind to it to level up from what I understand. And it just would be to- so time consuming. Like I'll be like you, whereas I'll definitely check it out. Love Harry Potter. I love these type of games. It'll be great. But um, I just, yeah, who's got, who's got the time? So yeah, I- I'm really like, I'm excited. It's cool, but I'm just really interested. You don't like, you don't want to kind of jump into one of these games and then all you're having is issues because it just ruins the experience. So I really hope that, they can execute. Here's my answer for that. Don't play the game for its first week. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ash, do you have any thoughts about this uh, whole thing? Uh, rest in peace, Pokemon Go. Born 2016. Dead 2019. Oh my- you wrecked Do you seriously <laughs> no, think? No. Get uh, out of here. <laughs> I just wanted to see what reaction that we get. Uh, yeah, it seems like they've figured out a way to fit Harry Potter into their system. Um, the only issue I have is you seem to be constantly trying to fix some sort of problem that in the end you're never going to be able to fix. And I don't know how long, long that can sort of hold people's attention, I guess. Like how many mm. times are you going to have to fix the same spell every time? Like it's all mm. right catching the same Pokemon every it, time. It also makes sense within the lore because there's multiple. Yeah. Po- well, apart from the legendaries, that's yeah. the only part that it kind make- of break, breaks the law, but everything else seems to make, make sense makes within sense. the Pokemon world. I think because in- they... Yeah. There was a collectible side of it too, though, so it depends how um, how much that really takes up. Yeah, within I the game. Uh, well, I I think we're all going to check it out when it first comes out, so we'll just wait and see about yeah. that. Well, we'll all have opinions, but uh, yeah, at, at the moment, I'm <sighs> I find it hard to believe that people who either play Ingress or Pokemon hardcore or on a daily basis at least uh, will want to put too much time into this just simply because of how much more it's going to evolve and time it's going to take and stuff although but then i'm of course not counting the crowd of people who don't care about pokemon go and don't care about ingress and are huge harry potter fans and this is finally the go game that's for them there's also like there's that ghostbusters one that came out last year that had a very small uh crowd of people get into that but it was the same sort of thing where it's like don't care about ingress well ingress is a new ip so who fucking has any attachment to that really but they don't care about pokemon but then ghostbusters came out and they're like fuck i'm a huge ghostbusters fan so i'll try this one out so there was a jurassic park one as well which kind there was of a garfield came one. out burned and there was a garfield one holy shit there was too i completely yeah. forgot <laughs> yeah but i i completely forgot that was a thing i actually downloaded it and tried it out i tried out jurassic park one as well but all of those were i never actually tried the ghostbusters one though uh, which maybe I should just so, uh, try it out, play it for like an hour or something just to see what it is so I have comparison between all these ones. But the Jurassic Park one was meh. Like it just seemed like a cheap trying to cash into the go craze. The Garfield one, I do not even remember. It might have just crashed on me and I ne- couldn't be bothered <laughs> fucking <laughs> trying again. But yeah, now that you've mentioned that, I remember downloading it. Um, so yeah, it's like people are trying to get into Niantic's market. But the, the thing about this Harry Potter one 
And the reason we're kind of talking about it is because it is being made by Ni- Niantic, which is the, you know, they're the heads of the this genre, this whatever you want to go market, whatever live action I- AR reality thing that they basically created it with Ingress and then popularized it with Pokemon Go. And now this is their, their next thing after uh, Pokemon, next thing since Pokemon Go. So it's going to be interesting to see how it comes out, how well it's received, how well we all receive it, I guess. And then to see how for the next six months to a year following its release, how Ingress, Pokemon and Harry Potter all mm. handled and how they'll go. Because at the moment, Pokemon's just has like a new event every fucking month and they of course do every like quarter they're doing a um fuck do they call them the they're doing the, the live oh, fuck i can't even remember the pokemon events where they, they do them in different cities and stuff like pokemon go has got to the stage now where they have events all over the world and and stuff like that for that game so i don't know well, it'll, it'll be interesting let's move on to what we've been playing Get, wait can i just game, throw in but, uh story yeah. that i've just found that okay, is the reason i threw did the weird funny face <laughs> yes oh, i missed your funny face i'm sorry yeah no uh from kotaku written by brian ashcraft after cocaine arrest Sega halts sales of new ps4 game uh actor and musician pierre taki who voices yakuza kahomi yahara in judgment has been arrested for suspicion of illegal drug use according to mancini news uh, investigators searched Taki's car and Tokyo home based on tips they had received. Nippon reports that no cocaine was found. However, Taki was arrested last night and a urine test turned up positive results for cocaine. Taki was admitted to violating the country's drug laws and using a small amount of cocaine. Investigators are examining his mobile phone to discern more about his alleged drug use. Sega has issued a statement saying that as the truth has been co- was being confirmed, it was going to stop selling the retailer and digital vis- versions of Judgment Eyes. Sega apologized for any troubles th- that this may have caused, adding that it was considering what steps to take next. If that were not enough, Sega is also deleting tweets about Judgment. Uh, yeah, and it sort of goes on to the actor's history. But that seems to be a bit of an excessive extreme uh, response to one of your voice actors. Uh, I'm very fucking confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Back up. That was a lot to <laughs> take yeah. in. So, hold on. You yeah. wanted news? Oh, it was news to you. It was news, oh, yeah. 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 Arrested for seeing rather precise Japanese version of Frozen as well as stuff. I, I don't know. Hold on. Go back. Explain to me. They're, they're pulling the game tweets about the game and they're doing what else? Yeah. They're judgment? deleting the game. Tweets about the game, and then they're pulling the game from sales, so you can't they're buy the game. The game from s- you can't buy the from game shops. at the moment. No, in Japan, obviously, but yeah, okay, that's all right. That's nuts. That's sure. Yeah, like, I understand. He did cocaine. I'm not saying that's good, but at the same time, I don't think it's so bad that you're you like it's not Kevin Spacey. You know what I mean? You don't. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, their culture is very different, though. Uh, I guess. Yeah, this is. <laughs> Which I, I character re- did he play in Judgment? Do we know? He's like a mob boss or something like that. Okay, it makes Not sense. Like the main say, character, it, as far as it'd I be can tell. really weird if the main character, which is a fucking uh, what we decided was a uh, a lawyer, the lawyer, <laughs> lawyer, yeah, uh, the main character, the lawyer, has got caught doing cocaine. That would be uh, even more awkward, I suppose. Uh, if you want to hear me and Ash talk about judgment a little bit more, you should check out Platinum Explosion episode one hundred and one, where we talk about judgment, the Yakuza spinoff, now being banned off Japan, <laughs> Japan <laughs> shelf from sales. For sales. Uh, but still yet to come out in Europe where it has a different voice actor doing that character so <laughs> we should be fine <laughs> uh, well hold on that makes the Platinum Explosion's news story even weirder since the main topic we talked about is how they're subtitling it twice so then they're going to pull the Japanese voyo from the oh my god I'm fucking we can't talk about it anymore that's okay that's interesting thank you very much for doing a real Crash Bandicoot spin over here and I'm just over here like Aku Aku, motherfucker. Yeah. I'm lost now. Uh, damn you, Crash Bandicoot. Now let's move on to talk about what we've been playing, the one game we've been playing. And by weave, I mean me. So I've played about two hours of The Division. I know it's not very much, but I wanted to get my general impressions out there, of, of course, of what the 
the game is. By the time this episode releases, I'll probably have played a little bit more. But I mean, honestly, I think the thing with this game is that I'll be high. If people are putting out reviews now, I'm going to, I would suggest just kind of shaking your head because I, I mm. do feel like with these games where they're obviously, you play through the campaign, I guess, like the story missions and stuff, and then you get to the end game and then you have to do a bunch of the end game to really experience what it's all about and then all that sort of stuff. So it's like, I wouldn't really trust any reviews that aren't po- like, at least for like uh, two weeks from now or something like that, like a week from now, at least at the earliest or something like that. But because uh, I remember when Anthem reviews started going up like two days after the game was out, I was like, calm the fuck down. Like, how much have you really done here to discuss this game? Um, my feelings on it are, well, should put out there, I liked the first division. I enjoyed the first the division quite a lot. Got the platinum, played it a fair bit. I played probably 70% of it with by myself. And then I played a fair chunk with... Um, one Samuel, who is an IRL friend, which we're not allowed to bring no. up. But there's no, one. he's your one real life friend that you're allowed to bring up. Yeah, who's not in to... the explosion network. I don't count anymore. It's so I don't, I don't. We don't get to do the oh, it's the IRL friend because you're my IRL friends too. So it's like, where's the, the where's the? It's the one friend I have who lives in Tasmania. There's the the uh, there's the dis- distinction for you, for you there. Um, yeah, I played a lot of the original division with him. Um, so I did a lot of the Dark Zone stuff with him but i did majority of the story missions by myself and then i fucked around in the world a lot got all the collectibles and and stuff like that but i I had a good old time playing the first one and so far starting two it's like hey this is the division but better and i'm not saying that's a a bad thing because it's obviously a good thing if you if you're a fan of or liked the first one but I, i definitely don't feel like if you hate what the division is or those types of games the division two is suddenly gonna change your mind about being into these types of games the world is a lot more interesting this time compared to the first division the first division obviously took place uh i say obviously then fucking forget where was it uh uh, new york wasn't it yeah new york yeah i'm 99 percent sure uh which was a whole heap of tall buildings around you rubbish everywhere and like obviously some areas looked a little bit different to one another but for the most part it was just you're in a city you're walking around it's very dark gloomy and you'd go into most areas look the same. In this one, there's grass. There's <laughs> there's there's more colors in use. The the scenery and stuff that you walk around look looks different. There's the walking around. You actually feel like you're exploring, uh, and you're not just walking around in fucking circles where all the places look the same. Going into different buildings and stuff, they're all d- designed differently. And I've not not so far have I been like, oh, this one seems exactly like that other place I just so happened to go to. So that's that's fun and interesting. Uh, the story set up is interesting i'll be surprised i'm i'm gonna be intrigued if they put a little bit more effort into it with this one because i enjoyed division's initial setup for like its lore and story but then of course the first game really didn't do too much with expanding on it apart from setting up which is that i think it takes place in 2015 or 2005 i can't remember all i know is there's a five involved there somewhere and it's like on the black friday sales uh the conspiracy government blada 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 they put a virus on a bunch of uh dollar bills or whatever and then that's how they infect the populace by having them all go out on black friday sales and then this big toxin basically takes out a huge part of the population and then that side of the government still trying to kind of wipe out people within the that are fighting back and the division agents are all like sleeper agents of normal people. And that was the thing about the first game. It's like, Oh, this person's a lawyer. Oh, this person's a fireman. And they're all like, they agreed to be like sleeper division agents. And then when this huge epidemic started there, they are fucking all watchers, which they also happen to have the same ones. Like we're like, beep, beep, you're in motherfucker. And then they all suited up and, and got to work. So that's kind of how the division one pitched and worked. Cause it's like everyone here that's running around with guns is an everyday person and they were all sleeper agents and that was kind of how it was supposed to be to get the player interested i guess it wasn't like oh they're all like fucking macho super agents of fucking members of swat elite or, or something like that so uh this game kind of starts there's an opening clip and then all of a sudden you get called over to washington dc because there's a distress call there and then you, you get there and you discover much like the first game there's a bunch of different uh terrorists uh, whatever you want to call them different factions of be- teams throughout the city that are doing evil 
things, of course, that you need to fight back with. And there's the main base of hub, which is actually Washington. Uh, the uh, What the fuck do they call it? I don't actually know. This, I feel like this game would... This, another thing. I feel like this game would be more interesting depending on how much you're into like American history and stuff because it's like they've really gone to a lot of detail to recreate Washington, D.C. And I've read a lot of articles at this point because there's a lot out because uh, Ubisoft invited a bunch of press people from all over the world. Like I know um, Stephanie Bendix and uh, Hex went over, for example, and a bunch of people from Australia and then a bunch of people from America, like the uh, What's Good Games p- people, Andrew and that were talking about it, uh, went over to Washington. So they had a whole people come to Washington and they basically took them around and really talked about how much effort they went to into uh, detailing and laying out the game uh, and its world and locale and recreating Washington and how much of it, diffi- how much difficulty they had doing that because it's like, there's so many laws, like you can't just take pictures of certain things and whatever else. And they had to get permission and uh, there's certain things they wouldn't be allowed to put in the game for certain legal re- reasons. And it's all very weird, but the overall product, it looks great. The old structures look like what I think they look like, but my, what they think they look like is based off seeing them getting blown up in fucking <laughs> movies and stuff. Yeah. I yeah. Like, I, it's, it's definitely a different experience when you have like, either been to those places or I can imagine if if you actually live in those places. Because I know like when I play games that it's New York or like an San Fran or any of those places that I've been to, you, you can recognise things and it is more enjoyable and a bit more exciting. Yeah. So it's just it's a different experience. Yeah. Me and Dylan will have to take your word for it. Yeah, I, I'm waiting for them to make a game about Tassie or Melbourne or something. Like <laughs> maybe the next division, Division Australia. Uh, maybe everybody would be more. heaps more relaxed. There'd be less guns. You'd just be worried <laughs> yeah. about the animals. Potentially. More people swearing in your face. <laughs> yeah. t- Talking about animals, there are fucking wild animals that just roam around in the streets in this game. Like you'll see like dogs and deer and stuff. And in case you don't, you want the, the question answered. Yes, you can kill them all. You can shoot the dog. You can shoot the deer. But There's no reason to do it. N- no, you cannot. There's also no reason to shoot them. You get fucking nothing out of it, but the game lets you do it. So if you want that question answered, y- yeah, yeah, you can shoot them and be a monster. There you go, I Peter. had to do it. I had to find out. I had to, I had to know what, what was up. I'm yet to sh- I've tried to shoot birds, but I've yet to be able to hit one. They're fast fuckers. They move, they move fast. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, if you played the first one and you like New York is obviously known for its uh, rubbish and because they like took that over when the, you know, the, a big thing happens and stuff happens everywhere. And it's like, oh, of course, the, the litter trash would get in even more places and, and go everywhere. This game is even worse than that. Like there's literally shit everywhere in New York City, which, uh, oh, sorry, in Washington, D.C., even more so than the first game. And overall, I'm surprised how good the game actually looks for a, you know, a shared world type thing. It's it's actually rather pretty. The character models are, they're fine, but like from when you're kind of looking at a lot of the design around the place with the, it actually at times looks rather pretty, which I was surprised at considering it's a pop- apocalyptic type end of the world-ish uh, shared world universe game. And it, uh, it's a lot of detail and there's a lot happening. There's a lot of stuff littered on the floor like and a lot of stuff that goes, little detail stuff that I find interesting. Like there's all these signs on the, the ground and stuff from people like doing protests, I guess, and, and they've been wiped out. Uh, but you can go around and reading them and I, I was looking over a bunch because I was like waiting to see how many I could read before I would find the duplicate of one and be like, aha, yeah. gotcha. There's only like three you've written and you've just duplicated them. But I think I read like 10 and they're all written different. So I was like, okay. Fuck you, Ubisoft. Uh, <laughs> the <effort into laughs> there's the game. only 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe there's only 10. I don't know. Uh, also, this game has a little bit more uh, feeling to it while you're, you're walking around. So between missions, there's actually like, you'll find people like trying to do like public executions of like the end, like the bad guys trying to do public executions of people. And you can, uh, you'll hear them like, doing like a speech like oh no, no, hang this person and of course you can sneak up and then save that person and like it just adds a little bit more to the world than just in the first game you'd just roam around and enemies would just kind of be standing just, around until you started shooting at them and then react just to silly course. just don't monologue just get to the execution yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean just just get the job over you've with. been found guilty uh, bang yeah well that's true 
the hub worlds as well. So this I've only unlocked two so far. There's the DC home base, which is very cool and set up and whatever else. But then there's another place. I can't remember his character's name, but they've like set up, of course, a, a sanctuary for people to come. And there's like constantly music playing and there's like a DJ kind of like talking in the background about like a song will play in it. I was listening to a song, like it sounds like fucking Lady Gaga. And then at the end, they're like, oh, I don't remember what year this song came out, but it's a classic that I'm sure that we all remember. And it adds a little bit of life to that area that you're walking around, of course. And uh, that's good. But as I said, I've only played a couple of hours and a fair bit of that time I've actually spent fucking around with my character's appearance because I'm <laughs> unlike when I tried out the beta, I was just like, get me to the fucking game. I don't care what my character looks like. This time, I'm, of course, I spent the time getting all the characters' details right. I ended up going with a female character model because all the male models look like shit as far as I was concerned. So uh, running around as a female character, if you see me around, yeah, that Viva La Dill, that is me when you see me in the dark zone, when I get to the dark zone in the future. Sure. Uh, I'm yet to... <laughs> I'm yet to play with other people too, so uh, I'll see how that goes when I jump in with some other people. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to playing more. So far, it's good. If you like the vision, you'll like this. If you like shared world games, you might like this. I don't know. That's the thing. It's like you may like Destiny, but you won't like this. You may like Anthem. You might like this. I I don't know. It's really hard to pick what too exactly early to works tell. in those. Yeah, it's too, too early to tell. And I don't know what the end game content's going to be like. So, and of course, that's a big part of this and the, the gameplay loop. And the Dark Zone in the first game was fine. It wasn't fantastic, but I enjoyed for the amount of hours I put into it. The You go around, kill enemies, try and get legendary items. And then, of course, you'd have to take it to an area, call down a helicopter thing, attach your items to it. And then hopefully no one would come in and try and steal your shit. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing all that horrible stuff and getting panicked as fuck when I'm like, I've got the legend, I've got like two legendary items, please don't. Oh, and then someone comes around the corner and fucking kills me and I'll be like, you fucking asshole. And that's the Division 2. Tom Clancy's the Division 2. I'll talk about it more in the future, I'm sure. Maybe a couple of episodes from now when I've got to the Dark Zone and that sort of stuff. What's the cause and what's the effect? Are we the starting point or just a necessary evil in this? We're on a mission to find answers to these questions. Or die trying. Game Reformer this month has a bunch of coverage for Control, the upcoming game from Alan Wake, Quantum Break developers, uh, Remedy, of course. Uh, this was announced at the PlayStation conference. Oh, let's put quote conference in quotation marks of course because no one really knows what the showcase fuck the e3 thing or showcase is that what we're referring to it as? i think that's what they the call weird, it weird weird stadium transferring e3 showcase sure um as usual with game Forever's coverage they have a 94 rapid questions video that you can uh look up and i'll suggest watching because it answers some interesting questions like when uh the game director of control one mikel cass european uh, compares control to, to uh, Stanley Kubrick's like The Shining and say, says it has a Kubrickian feeling, which of course tingles all sorts of things inside me whenever people say Kubrickian. Uh, there's a lot of amusing questions I answer as well, including one where it's also really funny because the dude, the dude, uh, I think they're like Swedish developers or like Finnish. I don't, I don't know. Some, somewhere in like that kind of region. So where this American like game performer dude's asking him all these funny questions and the, <laughs> the this guy game director dude's kind of just like. What? What? Is that a joke? Like, it's, it's, I don't know if he's just on board or doesn't know what's going on, but it's quite interesting to watch. Uh, I haven't really seen too much about Control come out over the last six months, though, or plus six months since it was announced. And I honestly did not care too much about it. You know, it was a game I knew that existed because it, we was watching the PlayStation thing when it was announced. And I remember being like, oh, Remedy, new game. I don't know what the fuck this is. I don't, that uh, reveal trailer didn't really grab me at all. The only interesting part about it was that Remedy was publishing a game that was on multi console, of course, and then they were also revealing it at a PlayStation conference, which was interesting given their mark, uh, Xbox relationship. Okay. Uh, which also, that's one funny yeah, thing that from that 94. Yeah, that was 94. <laughs> in that 94 rapid questions video, the the game, uh, game four person is like, Is there anything you want to turn to the camera right now and say to Microsoft? And the guy's like, nope he's like you sure there's nothing you want to say to him and he's like i'm happy to be on your platform microsoft i was like oh there's some bad <laughs> bad trauma <laughs> between fucking remedy and um, microsoft yeah fuck microsoft at this point but yeah so that was kind of amusing part of all that uh yeah so 
it's a multi-platform game now on PlayStation and Xbox, and I think that's it. I don't think PC. I'm not hundred sure though. To be honest, who cares anyway? Some people care. I'm sure this is the paid <laughs> PC episode at this stage. I think. Um, but honestly, after watching and reading a bunch of stuff from this game reformer coverage, and then going back and watching a, a bunch of trailers and stuff that I, I've missed, I'm like, holy shit! I'm kind of really in for what this game is and i mm. just haven't been paying any fucking attention to it at all so i decided let's uh i'm gonna sell it to everyone let's, let's we're gonna talk about it. it and get uh other people excited about it because i think it's uh kind of going under the radar a bit obviously given because i wasn't caring about it but yeah uh they have a gameplay video on the game former coverage that shows off many different ways in which in the game you'll be able to do combat and it looks fucking hectic and amazing so you're basically a Jedi because you can pick up and throw objects around uh, the room, throw them around. It, it, in fact, the gameplay kind of reminded me of um, Force, Force Unleashed, Unleashed, but a bit yeah, Force Unleashed, but a bit better for sh- for sure. Uh, you can fr- so you can also grab objects and like use them to form a shield around you, and then you can like throw that shield at enemies and stuff like that. And you can also take over enemies' minds uh, up to two. They say in the thing, you can take up to two enemies' minds. Uh, if they're like heavy assault enemies, obviously they'll be good at assaulting. If you take over an enemy that heals other enemies, then they'll start healing you. So you can be tactical about that, of course. These are also all abilities that you're not going to have unlocked from the start of the game, but you'll gradually unlock uh, throughout the wow. game at different points. Like a video yeah. game? Holy shit, you're fucking blowing my mind. Uh, but the la- the last one and the, the best one, of course, is that you're able to levitate and fry- fly around in this game, which was no- also an interesting thing in that 94 Questions video. They do ask, have you played Anthem? Because, of course, in Anthem, you can levitate and fly around. And he says, I think I played Anthem once. Uh, ours is better. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, these are a bit fighting words. Uh, and you also have a gun in the game called the Director's Pistol, which can be upgraded and it takes different forms, which was reminding me of that um, Suda 51 game. Fuck, I forgot what it's called now. Uh, Shadow something or other. It was out on PS3, which your gun took many different forms. But also in that game, your gun did talk to you and stuff because it's a Suda 51 game. So that's a little bit different. Uh, If you're not up to date on Control, though, the synopsis for what the game is, is after a secretive agency in New York is invaded by an otherworldly threat, you become the new director struggling to gain regain control. This supernatural third person action adventure game will challenge you to master a combination of supernatural abilities, modifiable loadouts and reactive environments while fighting through a deep and unpredictable world. And that their world, I'd suggest watching a rather creepy world trailer that they dropped in December. And once again, I didn't watch cause I just wasn't having my eyes open to control at all, which sets up the tone of the game and the world, which does come off very creepy. I found the world trailer tonally to be a bit off putting. So, um, starting with you, Ash, have you been paying any at all attention to control? Are you better than me? And if the answer is no, what do you think of kind of the game form stuff? If you've checked a bunch of it out or, you know, what do you, what do you think about control? Uh, no, I wasn't. I hadn't thought about it since PS4, the PS4 yep. showcase. So, uh, I also apparently was not paying enough attention. Um, yep. Obviously, it did, there was no, there's no current release date. I don't believe so. Uh, they said a season in American season, which tr- I think translates to sometime like whatever one ends around September-ish, like or something like that. So it could, it could potentially release like August, September or somewhere around there. Okay. Well, it, it reminded me of two games that were out on PS2 that were like really, really, really close to each other. Uh, Second Sight and PsyOps, the MindGate Conspiracy, which is also no used that. About those are <laughs> also do those telekinesis and those psycho, psychology, the, the superpowers. Mind control shit type. The mind control stuff, stuff yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. second site was bought, the rights were bought by THQ Nordic, I think, to mention them again. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks cool. I mean, it seems like it's all going to be set in the one building, which might... It is. So it all takes place within this one building, uh, apparently the oldest building. I was trying to find a direct quote here somewhere. Uh, here. Oh, Just here the- uh, I, I clicked on a Wikipedia page in case I needed to grab any fast things. So what I'm reading from now is Wikipedia, so take that with a grain of salt, but I'm pretty sure it's fine. Uh, 
Uh, control takes place primarily within the oldest house, a featureless, brutalist skyscraper in Manhattan that acts as the headquarters of the Federal Bureau of Control, a secret government organization that deals with unexplained and supernatural phenomena. And also in that world trailer, it kind of explains the building, which from the outside just looks like your normal skyscraper but then within it it's like got portals to other worlds like creeping in and stuff so although they're saying the entire game takes place within one building because they've got portals to other worlds and all sorts of shit going on i'm sure by the end of the game you're gonna see some shit I'd yeah. say. <laughs> it definitely seems like there's going to be some psychological stuff mind messing sort of thing yeah but yeah looks interesting I mean, I don't know how much of that gameplay was actually accurate because it seemed like people were just standing there waiting to be hit. But other than that, uh, that just seems like they were showing off the showing. Yeah, off I think the they're powers, just showing yeah. moves and things. Uh, Shree? Um, yeah, I think it looks cool. I think it looks um, like I liked. It looks new, unique. It looks awesome, though, to be able to dive in and use some of those um, skills that you have like they were saying most of it is based off telekinesis and then you got the um telepathic of being able to like control people's minds and things but um the launch um technique seems awesome and that's what they were saying that you do you seem to use that a lot in the game where you can um like levitate things up and throw them at people um and then they were talking about how you then as you progress throughout the game get to use um, multiple, multiple, multiple skills all at once, so you can levitate and use the launch and um, things like that. So, I, yeah, I think it looks really cool. Yeah. I think it's like one of the games that I'll be pretty, pretty keen to check out. Another thing that uh, like to compare it, I, I've played Alan Wake. I haven't played Quantum Break. Oh, well, I played Max Payne One, which they did. I've played Alan Wake, which they did, and I've. I haven't played Quantum Break, but I think I own it. And I've, it's been on my list of things I actually want to play at some stage on my Xbox. But um, all their, usually in their games, uh, Remedy games, their combat is like, you know, like enemies are always in the same place. Like they're very scripted level layouts because that's how their games have always been, more like proper laid out levels where enemies will always appear in the same place and blah, 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 blah. One thing I found out by listening to the Game Informer podcast where they was talking about it is, and one of the, the weird things I was getting excited about is, it's like, the, I can't remember they asked the girl on it. I can't remember the name, I'm sorry. But they're like, What's your, what was the most exciting thing that you saw about it? And out of everything that she could think of, she starts talking about the... Uh, the combat, which they're going to have, um, uh, what the fuck is the word for randomly generated? Uh, procedurally generated. It's like procedure, more procedurally generated uh, enemy and combat layout and stuff like that. So you could enter a building and, of course, like the enemy types for you compared to a different player and where they are and all these sorts of things, which rightfully so, someone else then is like, as she's talking about, it's like, is this really the thing you're most getting excited about? Because it isn't like mind-blowing compared to other games. And I think like, but then she's like, yeah, but compared to like Remedies, other games, it's like a big step for them as a a studio yeah. to kind of branch out and do a different sort of thing. And I also think it makes sense within the context of the game and its story, I guess, to have it not feel as scripted, to have it more uh, random and more chaotic. Cause it kind of feels like you're going to do that thing of you'll walk into a room. There'll be fucking weirdly creepy enemies <laughs> floating in the sky, <laughs> which does is something that I'm like, Oh, it just looks creepy. I don't like seeing things floating in the sky like that, where they look like deathless uh, death bodies just kind of, Sitting up there, death don't like bodies, death bodies, yeah, death bodies. Yeah, oh, they're like de- 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 <laughs> deathless. Yeah, whatever. Um, just floating up there, and then of course you can walk into a room, and a bunch of enemies will appear, and that's like how you go about taking down those enemies. That is going to be fun. I just really think that, like, you know, jump up in the air, start fucking levitating. You, you pick, fucking pick up a chair, throw it at them, form a shield, go for it. It just seems like the, you start shooting with your director's gun which i'm sure is going to have its own uh skills and stuff that you'll get by the time you fully upgrade it and these sorts of things because there's going to be a lot of upgrading and un- unlocking to be to be done in in this game so i think that's also really inter- re- interesting aspect of it i suppose even though it's like a weird thing to bring up that it's like procedurally generated enemies oh my god blowing my fucking mind with this shit um so a little bit more on it says the FBC, so the Federal Bureau of Controls, uh, goal is to study, contain, and if possible, seizure control of supernatural elements and manipulate them. 
for their own purposes, often regardless of moral considerations. Sounds like some typical fucking government shit to me. Uh, the oldest house itself acts as the main setting of control and is a supernatural place of power where the FBC contains various altered items, objects which have been acted upon by supernatural forces. The oldest house's topography is constantly shifting and it is inter- its interior is vastly larger than its exterior. FBC has developed ritualistic processes which can alter the older house in certain ways, allowing one to potentially travel indefinitely deeper into it, gradually leaving our ordinary reality behind. Uh, so, yeah, it sounds like it could potentially get really creepy and weird at times and those sorts of things happening within it. Uh, they've got a little bit more about here, the main character, uh, one Jesse Faden. Uh, it says, after a traumatic childhood experience grants her unexplained supernatural powers, which of course is the, the levitating the ability to grow objects and throw them. That's not really a thing that most people have. Uh, Jesse Faden, being played by Courtney Hope, seeks answers at the Federal Bureau of Control, a clandestine government agency tasked with studying and containing supernatural phenomena. After the Bureau's headquarters, the oldest house is invaded by an other lonely force known as the Hiss, which I'd like to say I think the... the calling something the hiss and calling it bad i'm not i'm not a big fan no it doesn't sound super scary the hiss really okay uh jesse is thrust into the role of director of the fbc fbc via strange ritualistic process now haunted by the ghostly remnants of former director zachariah trench which is being voiced by james mccaffrey uh who is the voice of max Payne, most famous for so uh remedy has a relationship with of course and it's the voice you hear when you watch the world trailer and you can tell it's max Payne because it just constantly sounds like fucking max Payne with the deep voice uh jesse must find her way through the ever shifting holes of the oldest house in order to defeat the hiss and uncover the answers she seeks so yeah i'm i think the the setting i'm really intrigued it sounds creepy mm. it sounds weird i um they're, they're setting up this whole thing of uh they're not revealing too much of course but it's like she has She's going there in the first place because she wants them to answer some questions about her past because, of course, she's got supernatural powers. She's going to the place where that, that handles supernatural shit. So I presume that she's going there trying to either find an object or a person or answers for maybe an object or a person that potentially gave her her supernatural powers or something as a, uh, a child or, or whatever is going on there that caused her to have those powers in the first place. And then also makes me wonder why she's roaming about in the open uh, and why if the, this FBC is like kind of capturing everything supernatural, why they haven't actually captured her. So they even don't know about her, I guess, or are using her. I don't know. There's a lot of interesting questions there to set up. Uh, so yeah, she's going to go to the FBC looking for answers into something. And then suddenly <laughs> gets, I don't know why the, the whole thing is like suddenly dragged into and becomes the director of the FBC. It's like, okay, that's, interesting aspect of the story i suppose <laughs> and then you're going to have the old director's voice in your ear constantly so you the old director's going to get morphed into you i i don't know some weird shit's going to go down um it looks fun to play i'm um, like mm. the, the the story that we're setting up yeah. i like the setting where it's looks really creepy and stuff and yeah honestly i've it's just one of these games where i was like i had no idea that i even cared about it and then all of a sudden i was like i really care about this game. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not that's nice to suddenly care about something <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, Ash, do you have any uh, final thoughts on any control stuff? Looks good. Can you just say more? <laughs> yeah. Ten out of ten. It'll be interesting to see how deep the story is. Obviously, uh, Remedy's famous for no, their for story. story. Yeah. yeah. How how in depth and uh, diverse and sort of what sort of twists and turns it takes. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd I expect like, a good story. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like the story could let it down. We need explanation of how she, you know, of her progression of everything. And it'll be interesting to see, like, how you um, produce these new skills within the game and the story as well, I think. You just start, she's probably a need me, uh, has amnesia, and then she starts remembering, oh, yeah, I can do that. That's it a seems very like cliche thing. Every yeah. time. <laughs> every yeah. time you get a new skill. Please don't. Oh shit, I can levitate. Fuck, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I really forgot about that one. That's, that or she uh, steals souls. Well, no, come on. Why are we making her into a bad guy straight away? She's the good guy. Is she though? 
Is she? Oh oh, fucking hell, Jesus Christ. Let's just end this podcast now. Jeez, you've just ruined it all. You've ruined it all. <laughs> thank, thank you for... <laughs> Shree, do you have any closing control thoughts? No. Okay. <laughs> then for sure. <laughs> then actually, we are actually ending the show then. Uh, thank you for joining us on the couch this week. Make sure you check out Explosion.com for all our other shows, reviews, news, articles, and much more. Rate Arcade Couch on Apple Podcasts to help out the show or simply share it on social media with your friends, retweeting, quoting, Facebook sharing, Instagram sharing, Instagram stories sharing, Tumblr, Vbops, bit to Google Plus. That's our thing that got cancelled. You can follow Explosion Network on Twitter at Explosion Pod and join our Discord at ExplosionNetwork.com, of course. Follow me on Twitter at VivoDil, V-I-V-A-L-A-D-I-L. Follow Ash on Twitter at Ashley Hobby, A-S-H-L-E-Y-H-A-B-L-E-Y. It's a thing. And follow Cherie on Twitter at Cherie Corno, C-H-E-R-I-C-R-R-N-O. See you here next week. Same time, same couch. Bye-bye.